you. We continue to pray for you. Congratulations. Way to go. To all the graduates from the School of Education, on behalf of the faculty and staff of the School of Education at Concordia, we congratulate you on reaching this milestone. We're so proud of the hard work that you put in over these past years, and we look forward to hearing the great things that are going to be accomplished by you in the future. Always remember that to educate means to lead forth. As you lead your own classrooms next fall, be encouraged that God is always with you and he's going to lead you as you help students grow in body, mind, and spirit. Hello and happy graduation all. Whether you've been awaiting this day for months or whether this day came a little too soon, I hope you're proud to call Concordia your home away from home and proud of the person that you've become during your time here. It's been my honor to coordinate activities for you over the past three years, whether that was CIT fan experiences, casino nights with the beloved Mr. Concordia, and I hope that you take the joy, friendships, and purpose you uncovered at Concordia with you into your next stage of life. And remember, it's okay if your future is not 100% clear just yet. Trust your gut, your faith, and your Concordia experience to guide you. And remember, we'll be praying for you every step of the way. Hello and congratulations, class of 2020. This is Dr. Hollander, full-time faculty in the Batterman School of Business, but also a proud Concordian. I want all of you to understand and know how proud I am of all of you and how proud all of us are for you for getting to this point in your not only your academic journey, but for many of you, it's been a personal journey. Be proud of where you've been during this time. It's been difficult, it's been challenging, but you're all gonna do some great things and make all of us extremely proud. Congratulations. Hello Concordia graduates of 2020. I'm so happy for you. I congratulate you on achieving this milestone in your life. I have no doubt that you will go on to accomplish great things in your careers. Both your planned goals as well as unplanned accomplishments God has in store for you. While we're all disappointed that historical events have prematurely ended our face-to-face -face interaction and fellowship, I know that it has not deterred your spirit. For those of you that I have taught personally, I miss you more than you ever will know. And for the entire class, I pray for you. Keep Christ in your eyes and let's get after it. The world needs your leadership, your compassion, your service, and your spirit. Soli Dale Gloria. Dictionary.com defines congratulations as groups of people assembled for religious worship. Oh wait, that's congregations. Hey everyone, it's R.D. Quinn. I just wanted to insert any stereotypical sentiments that comes with wishing people good luck and congratulations because I have to. Just kidding, in all seriousness, we love you, we support you. If you ever pass on through Concordia, please stop on by. We're proud of you and all the hard work you've accomplished. Greetings. I think to congratulate you for graduation. Um, now you, when you walk out to your next uh, career, uh, you can walk with your head up tall and uh, let people know that you came from a good university, Concordia University in Mequa. Please be safe, uh, visit uh, whenever you can, and again, congratulations.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to Concordia University's virtual conferring of degrees for the class of 2020. And welcome to all Concordians, graduates, students, alumni and friends watching from across the country and around the world. This is a ceremony none of us will forget. And graduates, you will get a second ceremony, your commencement this December. We miss you and can't be, wait to be back with you in person. We know today is quite different from what we all imagined, but the important thing is that we are coming together to acknowledge you, our dear graduates, and to celebrate, and most importantly, to give thanks to God for his good gifts in your lives. We honor you and your achievements. This is your moment. And so let's begin. And we do so as is our Concordia way, with a word of blessing from our campus pastor, Reverend Steve Smith. God has put his name on each of us in our baptisms, and so we begin in that name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Well, God of grace, we thank you for this day. We're reminded of so many examples of your grace and of your providence individually, we think of the blessings of our families, of our friends, the ability to serve you in so many ways. As people connected with Concordia, we thank you for the many years of grace that you've poured out on this university. Help us truly to be Concordia, hearts united with one heart in faith serving you. Lord, this day we thank you for the women and men who graduate as they'll go forth They'll serve you and honor you in many walks of life. We thank you especially for those who will serve you in your church. Many thanks are given for families, including many parents, spouses, family who've sacrificed so much to make possible the opportunity for their loved ones to study here at Concordia. And so for all who serve you here, staff and faculty, regents, supporters, we're grateful. And finally, accept our humble praise and thanks for the greatest gift we can ever know, the gift of faith in knowing forgiveness through your dear son, Jesus. He alone came to bear our sin. He lived, he died, he rose again that we might have the hope of eternal life in his name. We pray in the name of our risen savior, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Graduates, your Concordia experience has been distinctive and uncommon. And as we prepare to celebrate your conferral, I am proud to introduce the class of 2020. Today, Concordia University confers 849 degrees. 201 of you are transfer students. 179 of you are first generation college students. And on this Armed Forces Day, we celebrate our 27 veterans graduating today. Congratulations. In the next few minutes leading up to your conferral, Concordia leaders and one of your fellow students will share words of encouragement and a charge for your future. We know with your degree and the foundation of your Concordia education, you are more than ready to meet the opportunities ahead. This conferral ceremony indeed marks a significant milestone in your journey. Today, you mark the end of this phase of your vocation as a learner, having completed the requirements for your degrees. Many of you are looking forward to embarking on your vocations in a professional setting, while others are preparing to pursue other educational goals. Some of you 
are in the midst of your professional endeavors and are looking to find ways to use your Concordia education to further your professional and other vocational goals. I encourage each of you to continue to pursue that vocation of a learner, however your future plays out. Our God has created humans to be lifelong learners. The freedom bought by Christ Jesus on the cross enables us as Christians to pursue our various vocations. And our world increasingly needs people who are able to learn, think, and adapt. Hold on to that vocation of lifelong learning. I now have the honor to introduce Concordia's president, the Reverend Dr. Patrick Berry. Thank you, Provost Cario. Bill, thank you for your uh, remarks to our graduates today. Uh, graduates, families, uh, it's, it's so good to be able to be with you in, in this way this afternoon. It's a remarkable day in so many ways. It began kind of in a in a remarkable way. I, as I got out of the shower this morning, I could hear music in the background. My wife, Tammy, had had turned on a, a recurring reel, a pomp and circumstance. <laughs> so it was playing throughout our house. And I have to say that, you know, when I first heard it, once I figured out what it was, it, it I, this almost brought a tear to my eye. It made me feel, you know, kind of sad. It was a feeling that uh, I experienced just a moment ago when I saw Pastor Smith standing in the front of the, the chapel and um, his words of prayer. And, and now as I listen to my dear friend Bill Cario speak to you today again, I'm, I'm mindful of the, the joy, but also the, you know, the extraordinary uh, dimension of this, this particular event today. Bill and I have been at Concordia a long time. This is his 30th year here. It's my 29th. We have not experienced anything like this before. And I, I'm sure that Provost Cario has not missed many commencement ceremonies during his three decades at Concordia. I, I've only missed once. And that was in 1996 when, uh, when I traveled to Colorado, to the University of Colorado for my own commencement uh, at the conclusion of my doctoral program. And, you know, I was really excited about it, just as I'm sure you were excited about today. We were uh, planning on a great event. My wife, Tammy, and I, we have five children. They were very small at the time, but we got airplane tickets for everybody. And uh, we, we prepared to travel. Uh, the day before we left, our middle son, Andrew, who was about seven years old at the time, eh, had a little case of stomach flu. And so that wasn't so great. But we, we went anyway on that Friday. And, um, and by the time Friday evening started rolling around, I wasn't feeling very well either. And I went to sleep and in the middle of the night, I was just sick as a dog. And by the time it was five o'clock in the morning, I had come to the conclusion that although we'd come all this distance, there was no way that I was gonna be able to go to, to my commencement ceremony that day. As it turned out, about 7.30, 8 o'clock, I rallied a little bit and to Boulder we went and uh, we, powered through the, the history department's special occasion. And then, and then we went through the, the larger commencement. It was on the field, on Folsom Field, dehydrated. The sun was beating down. I knew that my family was probably worried about me and feeling sorry for me. I should have been thinking about them, though, because I looked up into the bleachers and I could see my wife, Tammy, and her flowers. You can still see it vividly in my mind today, climbing over a chain link fence with our youngest son, Stephen, throwing up all over the place. By the time we got home that evening, uh, we had plans. Of course, it was a disaster because one by one, we were all picked off with this stomach bug. And, and we left that as a gift for my parents and my brothers and sisters so that they could remember the day as well. Well, the connection, I suppose, is, is, is not insignificant. And that, that's part of the reason why we're not all gathering in one place today. We don't want to infect each other with something much more serious than, than a stomach bug. But ironically, had our commencement um, played out today as planned, I wouldn't have been with you. I informed the, the board uh, in, in uh, January this year that I wasn't going to be able to be at Concordia's graduation for the first time since 1996 because my son Andrew uh, was to graduate today with his law degree from the University of Notre Dame, and I wanted to be there for that. I paid for most of it, so I thought it was only right. But anyway, uh, I guess I say that as a way of connecting not only with you graduates, but also with you parents, 
because I know how much we want to be a part of these kinds of celebrations to mark these moments in significant ways. I'll tell you this though, a year after my uh, commencement, at, uh, uh, my, my PhD commencement at the University of Colorado, a year later, I was elected the president of Concordia a year after that. So, so even though the commencement experience itself wasn't all that I hoped it would be, it didn't stop me. It didn't stop me from accomplishing some of the things that I'd hoped to do in my career. And although my son's commencement event today wasn't all that we hoped it would be, I'm sure that it's not going to set him back at all. In fact, this is just a moment, and we mark it, but it's a moment that looks back with gratitude at all you've accomplished, but more than that, it really looks forward to all of the things that you're going to do with the gifts the Lord has given you to make a difference and an impact in the lives of others. Your Concordia experience has been one marked by top drawer academic experience. You've learned a lot from great faculty, and you've uh, been engaged by staff who care about you and who've challenged you. But more than anything else, your Concordia experience has been framed by uh, the, the, the recognition that the Lord Jesus Christ is, is the Savior of the world and who loves you with an everlasting love. And even though this broken world right now is feeling the effect of, uh, of its brokenness, uh, we're mindful that he came to save us and he walks with us every step that we take forward. I know that you're going to do great things, and uh, we commend you to those things as you carry out the university's mission, serving Christ in the church and in the world. But, but in this time of great pause, we pause for just one more moment and give thanks to the Lord for all his blessings to us. And probably most of you aren't sitting by yourself in a room right now. Maybe you're surrounded by other people who've been a part of this journey with you, people who've made a difference along the way. And maybe it's your parents, or it's uh, your spouse, or your children, or your siblings. And you're thinking about your friends who are in their places today, too. We pause and give thanks to the Lord for all of them as well. And I pray that even though this last semester wasn't all that it, uh, uh, what we hoped it might be, that we will all pause and give thanks for this extraordinary university and for the role that it has played in each of our lives. Congratulations, graduates. God bless you all. Thank you, Dr. Ferry and Provost Cario. Now I have the honor of introducing one of our remarkable graduates, this year's student speaker, Skylar Petrick. Like all of you, Skylar has taken the disruption of his senior year at Concordia University in stride. Today, he earns a degree in accounting and finance. After graduation, Skylar will pursue additional studies in aviation before taking a place in his family's 50-year-old aviation business. And he has also had the distinct privilege of serving our undergraduate students as president of your Student Government Association. In this role, I have had the opportunity to see Skylar's leadership in action. He has a keen mind, a determined spirit, and is ready to lead, lead and serve in his future. Skylar represents all of our uncommon Concordians. We are so excited to hear his message for all of us especially his fellow graduates. Thank you for the kind words, Gretchen. Uh, greetings class of 2020. And with that, I ask all of you, what is your name? As each of us sits at home and celebrates one of life's great achievements in this uncommon way, we can all remember being asked that common question over and over and over again, as we sheepishly moved our things into our first dorm room or nervously took a seat at the back of the room in our first class at CUW. What's funny about that question is that it never really stopped there, did it? What is your name was always followed by where are you from and what are you studying? Sitting at Capco Park for the parent send off ceremony and listening to Pastor Smith pray for the new students prior to the start of my freshman year, I remember two thoughts crossing my mind. Number one, mom crying in front of all these people is going to be really embarrassing, but it's going to be even more embarrassing when I start crying too. And number two, all I know for sure in this moment is that my name is Skylar. I'm from Montana and I'm studying undecided. So we all set out on our first day and did what all good CUW students do. Some among us diligently studied at the kitchen table after put, having put the kids to sleep for the night, while others promptly left the girls' wing of the residence hall at 1 a.m. on weekdays. We most certainly did attend chapel every morning, while others braved the morning commute to class. 
we sang loudly at Haven. We received excellent grades and we did eventually choose programs of study. Something happened though in all of that excitement and I don't think many of us even realized it. We went from being Nick from Kekana, Wisconsin studying pharmacy and Ellie from Marquette, Michigan studying accounting and instead just became Concordians. We became Concordians because we were all united under one mission, a mission to develop in mind, body, and spirit for service to Christ in the church and in the world. The amazing thing about our collective mission, though, is that it is just as much a co-mission as it is just simply a mission. For a lot of us here today, we feel like we have climbed the proverbial mountain. But while we have certainly developed mightily in mind, body, and spirit at CUW, our service to Christ in the church and in the world is just beginning. Some among us have been called to serve the sick as nurses. Others have been called to serve the next generation as teachers. Still others have been called to serve both the church and the unchurched as missionaries and pastors. Each of you has been equipped with special talents to serve the church and the world around you. But I encourage you to take on a new perspective as you take up the mantle of your chosen vocation. Perform your service with zeal and service to the Lord because he first served us. His service came in the form of a cross and in the form of an empty tomb in the eternal promise of everlasting life through Christ Jesus. As the Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesians, for it is grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Take that promise with you, and when somebody asks who you are, Tell them that you're a Concordian, but more importantly, tell them that you are his. Congratulations, class of 2020, and in his service, amen. Thank you, Skyler, for those meaningful remarks. As university uh, provost, I commend you and all of our graduates on your accomplishments. Now, it is my privilege to present our candidates for degrees. We begin with our associates and bachelor degree candidates for the Associate of Arts, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and Bachelor of Social Work degrees. Each of these candidates has worked to establish a solid academic foundation, studying across a broad range of disciplines grounded in the coursework of the Concordia Corps. Each has shown remarkable personal growth. They are prepared in mind, body, and spirit with the insight and the skills they developed during their time at Concordia University. Congratulations. It is also my pleasure to commend those students who have completed the necessary preparation for degrees in professional church work. You have demonstrated sincere commitment to the calling of full-time service to the church and are prepared to go boldly where the Lord has called you. Congratulations. Next, we honor our graduate candidates. The master's degree candidates will be in the Master of Business Administration, Master of Church Music, Master of Occupational Therapy, Master of Science, Master of Science in Athletic Training, Master of Science in Rehabilitation Science, Master of Science in Physician Assistant Studies, Master of Science in Nursing, and Master of Social Work. The candidates for our professional doctoral degrees will be from 
the doctor of nursing practice, the doctor of pharmacy, and the doctor of physical therapy. These graduate students have demonstrated mastery in their disciplines and a dedication to sharpening their skills through rigorous, high-level academic study. These candidates possess the talent and the uncommon passion to make meaningful impact in their professions. Congratulations. To all of our graduates, congratulations on your remarkable scholarly creative achievements. You have shown uncommon potential. You have achieved the academic outcomes demanded by the Concordia curriculum. You are prepared and ready to make a difference in the world for Christ. I am proud of you all. President Barry, it is my pleasure to present these candidates for their degrees. They have completed their courses of study and are recommended for their respective degrees by the faculties of their schools. I now ask you to lead in the conferral of degrees. Thank you, Provost Cario, for presenting these candidates for degrees. Concordians, uh, your moment has, has come, and the moment is, is now arrived. And it is truly my great honor to recognize the excellent work that has earned you diploma from Concordia University, Wisconsin. And by virtue of the authority that is committed to me, I hereby confer upon each of you the degree or certificate for which you have been recommended by the faculty with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. And as evidence of these degrees and certificates, I shall direct that an appropriate diploma of Concordia University be presented to each of you signed by its officers and bearing the university's seal. My dear, dear Concordians, uh, on behalf of the entire community, Congratulations on this remarkable achievement. You are prepared, mind, body, and spirit, and ready to serve our Lord Jesus Christ in his church and in the world. You are Concordia's mission in action. And while I do look forward to celebrating with each one of you individually at the December commencement, go forth now and live uncommon lives of purpose for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a brief prayer that I chose probably at least 10 years ago that we always have at the end of our commencement. And I call it a prayer for new ventures. It's one of our, our prayers of the church. And the reason that I use it at the end of commencement is that it acknowledges that we don't always know exactly what the next step is, but that God does, and that that gives us confidence as we go out. So I'll conclude with a prayer for new ventures and then the Lord's prayer and a blessing. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, you've given us that prayer which you taught your disciples and which we now join in together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We go with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Congratulations, graduates. You are officially Concordia alumni. We know you will join the generations of your fellow alumni 
and use your gifts and talents to make an impact in the world for the sake of Christ Jesus. Wherever you go from here, you can always come home to Concordia. We've come to the conclusion of our event. Our thanks to everyone who has made this unique moment possible, our audio visual and communication staff, and so many faculty and staff who wanted to make today uncommon for each one of you. And finally, thank you to our graduates, more than 700 of you watching on Facebook and Zoom, and to your families. It has been our great joy to walk with you over these years and to celebrate this moment together. Go in peace, serve the Lord, live uncommon. Greetings CUW class of 2020, Steve Smith, campus pastor here. We are so happy for you. I have to confess every graduation is bittersweet for me though, because we have to say goodbye to those of you who we've come to know and love so well. You're so much a part of our campus and our lives. I've been blessed to share God's word with you, to serve you, to serve with you, especially campus ministry leaders who I've come to know and love so well. You have made my life better by your being here, and we pray that it's the same for you. We love you. We continue to pray for you. Congratulations. Way to go. To all the graduates from the School of Education, on behalf of the faculty and staff of the School of Education at Concordia, we congratulate you on reaching this milestone. We're so proud of the hard work that you put in over these past years, and we look forward to hearing the great things that are going to be accomplished by you in the future. Always remember that to educate means to lead forth. As you lead your own classrooms next fall, be encouraged that God is always with you and he's gonna lead you as you help students grow in body, mind, and spirit. Hello and happy graduation all. Whether you've been awaiting this day for months or whether this day came a little too soon, I hope you're proud to call Concordia your home away from home. I'm proud of the person that you've become during your time here. It's been my honor to coordinate activities for you over the past three years, whether that was CIT fan experiences, casino nights with the beloved Mr. Concordia. And I hope that you take the joy, friendships, and purpose you uncovered at Concordia with you into your next stage of life. And remember, it's okay if your future is not 100% clear just yet. Trust your gut, your faith, and your Concordia experience to guide you. And remember, we'll be praying for you every step of the way. Hello and congratulations, class of 2020. This is Dr. Hollander, full-time faculty in the Batman School of Business, but also a proud Concordian. I want all of you to understand and know how proud I am of all of you and how proud all of us are for you for getting to this point in your not only your academic journey, but for many of you, it's been a personal journey. Be proud of where you've been during this time. It's been difficult, it's been challenging, but you're all gonna do some great things that make all of us extremely proud. Congratulations. Hello Concordia graduates of 2020. I'm so happy for you and congratulate you on achieving this milestone in your life. I have no doubt that you will go on to accomplish great things in your careers. Both your planned goals as well as unplanned accomplishments God has in store for you. Well, we're all disappointed that historical events have prematurely ended our face-to-face -face interaction and fellowship. I know that it has not deterred your spirit. For those of you that I have taught personally, I miss you more than you ever will know. And for the entire class, I pray for you. Keep Christ in your eyes and let's get after it. The world needs your leadership, your compassion, your service, and your spirit. Soli Dale Gloria. Dictionary.com defines congratulations as groups of people assembled for religious worship. Oh wait, that's congregation. Hey everyone, it's R.D. Quinn. I just wanted to insert any stereotypical sentiments that comes with wishing people good luck and congratulations because I have to. Just kidding, in all seriousness, we love you, we support you. If you ever pass on through Concordia, please stop on by. We're proud of you and all the hard work you've accomplished. Greetings, I'd like to congratulate you for graduation. Um, now, you, when you walk out to your next uh, career, 
Uh, you can walk with your head up tall and uh, let people know that you came from a good university, Concordia University in Mequon. Please be safe, uh, visit uh, whenever you can. And again, congratulations.